that the Lord has made and we yeah. go boogie 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 in it. <laughs> Good morning guys, welcome to Business Garage this morning. Oh yeah, you are welcome to Business Garage. My name is Steve, you can call me Steve the Raven. You, My uh, name is Becky, share the link as always. Oh yeah, middle name, share the link. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome wherever you are, at your locations, at your hosting centers, yeah. at Worship Harvest, Nakawa. Yeah. Welcome to Business Garage this morning. Welcome. <laughs> yes, you are welcome to Business Garage today. Now, just to let you know, we are starting a new series today. And in, to get us started with our new series today, we are starting with the gentleman by the name Mr. Dennis Ngabirano. But you may not know the name, but you may know his business. That is Sam's Food Industries. Now, you may not know Sam's Food Industries, but you may know Sam's Crisps, Sam's Gronja, Sam's Binyewa, Sam's Hard Corn. All of that stuff that you have been enjoying, Sam's everything. He's in the building this morning. Uh, just had a photo with him. Sorry, I just took a photo of him. I was not with in the same... Yeah. But you get the point. So, that means share the link right now because we are getting a bucket load mm. of wisdom and knowledge being dropped by a very experienced yeah. person from being a teacher to being a business owner to being a manufacturer. I mean, oof. if you've not yet shared the link after telling you all of that, I don't know what share to do for you. but. Link. Hey. Share the link. Uh -huh. Come into the room. Share the link. Tell someone. Share the link. Come in share the room. Share the link. Yes. <laughs> and right about now, it's oh, time yeah. for the praise to go up. 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 <laughs> and we'll come with us this anointed, gifted, spirited worship team on a five, five four, four, three, two, two one. one. Let's go. Come on. Good morning, everybody. I said good morning. good morning. Welcome to Garage, Business Garage this morning. David writes and says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So are you glad to be here today? Are you glad to be here this morning? All right, this is the day that God has made. Come on. Hey.
joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Make a joyful shout, children of God, because the Lord is good. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know that the Lord he is God. It is He who made us and not we ourselves. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. So enter into His gates with thanksgiving. Come into His courts with praise. Come on, why don't you go ahead and lift your voice and raise it to the King of Kings. His ears are inclined to your thanksgiving. Count your blessings, number them one by one and tell Him, Father, I thank you for being good to me. I thank you for loving me. I thank you for choosing me, for drawing me to you. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for the gift of salvation, for your amazing grace. I thank you for the gift of righteousness. I thank you for healing. I thank you for provision. Come on church, you know what the Lord has done for you. Don't hesitate to tell him, thank you Father, for providing for my children, for providing for my family. Thank you Father, for growing my business, for giving me doors and opportunities in the city. Thank you Lord, for taking care of us, for leading us, for guiding us, for giving us wisdom, for taking care of us in every aspect. That's why this morning, we are making a joyful noise and a shout to our God who is ever loving, who is ever kind, who is ever gracious in Jesus' name. Welcome to Business Garage. Let's do this again. Welcome to the award-winning service. Hey! Why don't you turn to your neighbor and greet them with a good smile, with a hug, a high five, a fist bump. Compliment them. Ask them what business they do. Come on, people. You just never know where your next opportunity is. Online, in the house, at the location, a hosting center. We are very excited you have joined us to, for this award-winning service. It means that what is being served here has so much value and is impacting many people. So share the link. You may take your seats here in the house. You may take your seats wherever you are online. You are very, very welcome. Welcome, welcome. Now, in an extra special way, I would like us to recognize and welcome our first-time guests. If you're here for the very first time in the house, online, or at a location, we want to give you a special welcome. Just put up your hand, and your neighbor and our guest experience team are going to welcome you. Come on, people. Yes, there's quite a number of them this side. Yes, there's two of them this side. Come on, people. Help me make them feel welcome. Online, our hosts are there to make you feel welcome. On air, this is my voice. I am here to say thank you so much for choosing to join us this morning at a location I'm sat and our guest experience team is making you feel welcome. Now, if it, even in an extra special way, why don't you help me make feel welcome? Team Chigali! They're in the house, live with us here. You are very welcome, Pastor Joy and your team. We are very excited and honored to have you here. Amen, amen, amen. All right, Worship Harvest, why don't we remind ourselves and also tell our first time guests who we are. Who are we? We are a movement of the gospel, discipleship, and mission. And we are committed to catalyzing spiritual, social, and economic renewal in our immediate communities. And as a result, the world. And we believe that church begins on Monday and Sunday is garage time. Pew, pew. Oh yes, we are here to equip ourselves to be the best expression of church through our businesses starting tomorrow all through to Saturday. So if you haven't told your friends, your family that Business Garage has started, let them know this information could change the rest of their lives, could change their business and take it to the next level. Amen? Amen! Hey. All right. We are going to worship God with our giving right about now. So I would like to invite 
our guest experience team, they're coming around with the bags to wait on us. If you have a tithe and offering, just put it right in there. Buy the land, a rise and build. Just ask for an envelope and label it clearly and drop it inside the bags. If you're online, you're listening to me, you can participate as well. Use these numbers on MTN is 0778-618-418. The LTL number is 0758-618-418. And if you'd like to use any of our merchant codes, the MTN Momo Pay number is 148722. The Airtel Pay merchant code is 116-0032. You can also give through our website. Just type in your browser, worshipharvest.org forward slash give. And as we give, why don't you in a very special way help me welcome the worship team. Lord, we bless your name for today. And we thank you because you are so good. And we have this one thing to say. You are my thing for me. Perfect in harmony. Once you understand that, that you have a responsibility on your hands and you're just not privileged to do whatever you, you, you're doing, then 
that responsibility compels you to actually spread that business wherever um, you're able to. As long as you're not helping people relieve their pain, mm. then someone else will come up and do that responsibility very well. Bigger is not always better. But if we get better, our clients will demand that we become bigger. You cannot scale inefficiencies. Mm, multiply chaos. So you must not, you cannot scale losses. Already in one, you're not making it. Then you're saying, you know what? Ten. Mm. You'll die faster. Okay. You'll move closer to your grave. When you begin your business, the strength of the founder is the strength of the organization. As the business grows, the strength of the founder becomes the weakness of the organization. And so the issue is because most founders are very strong, um, opinionated, they are go-getters, they are, they are, they, driven. They, they are driven. Let's say you're good at sales. And when you start your shop in Nalia, you really make it in sales. You really kill it. And so the organization grows around you because you are actually the salesperson. And you're the one who delivers the, you're the rainmaker. Then as the organization grows, the very fact that you're a good salesperson becomes its limitation. Because now, when we say we are going to Chirika, who will be there? You're not there. You're not omnipresent. Yeah. And that becomes the problem. Mm -hmm. All right, help me appreciate the media team for putting that video together. We can do better than that, of course. Come on, people. Welcome to Business Garage. If you've just joined us, you're right on time for the value that we are about to receive today. I'm very excited today. It's extra special. Come on, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know why I'm excited? If you don't know, you need to find out why. But I'm going to tell you. I'm really going to tell you. I cannot not tell you. So yesterday, tell your neighbor yesterday, Business Garage was awarded at the Vine Awards. We won the award of Business Impact 2022. Come on, for you can celebrate better than that. Vine Awards, thank you so much for honoring us, for seeing what we do here and deciding, making a decision as an academy to honor us and award us with this wonderful, wonderful award. Um, in a very special way, first of all, this would never have been possible if Apostle Moses didn't give us this vision. So if you're in the house, why don't you get up on your feet and help me honor Apostle Moses. Come on, we can do better, better, even better than that for giving us this incredible vision. Many people watch Business Garage, you guys. Many people from some of them will never even get to know and their businesses have changed Some people have started some people have restarted some people have gotten better Apostle, thank you so much and now also help me appreciate the business garage team led by pastor Chris who is here in the house <laughs> Pastor Chris director Grace uh, Mona Sevliva all upon that team pastor B3 in absentia. Come on people Thank you so much, everybody who puts in the work to make sure this is a success. Pastor Chris, I hope you may take your seats. Pastor Chris, I hope you now you see that this, this work is worthwhile, right? Thank you so much. Pastor Chris leads our business garage service and he also leads our school of practical business and is one of our leaders in the business leaders network, right? So Pastor Chris, we celebrate you and thank you for leading us well. Come on, people, let me hear it for Pastor Chris. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we've been at it at the beginning of the year. We brought, started with bringing you some stories of small-scale industries, people who have started and restarted, just to encourage ourselves that after the lockdown, if your business had shut down, you can restart. Or if you hadn't started at all, we wanted to inspire you to start. And after that, we went into a series talking about the four Ps, praying, preaching, planting, pastoring, multiplying, which Director Grace and Mona did an incredible job. Come on, help me appreciate them one more time. Yes, 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 yes. 
they did an incredible job on this set every single Sunday, encouraging us to have a vision, to have the right partners, to have the right training, to have the to multiply. So thank you so much. I know that so many people really, really found those conversations very, very helpful. And now today we are shifting gears. Tell your neighbor we are shifting gears. And tell them, have you, ask them, have you shared the link? Ha, tell, come on, make sure they show you their phone. Have you shared the link? Put it on your status, put it on that family group, put it everywhere, let them know that we are starting something new that they are definitely also going to benefit from, so they need to watch. Um, sorry, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Florence. I'm very honored to be your host today. And today we are starting something new, like I said, this time around, we are bringing you businesses that have scaled and are bigger to inspire you to even make your business much, much bigger. And on set today, I am joined by none other than, let me hear it for him. Come on, help me welcome our guests. Hey, you guys don't like guests. I know you do. I know you do. I know you do. And I'm going to ask him to introduce himself. Yeah. And then to, you know, here at Business Garage, we are very fun people. We love stories, but also we allow you to send greetings. So I know that you have family, you have friends, you have frenemies, you have customers, you have teammen, you have workmen who are watching you. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and then send your greetings to all the people you love. Thank you so much, Pastor. Very good morning to you all. You look so amazing. You know, when I meet young, energetic, and good-looking people. I really feel energized. Hey. Thank you for taking care of yourselves. And above all, let's give a thunderous hand of applause to the living God for having given us an opportunity. <laughs> My name is Denz Ngabirano. Ngabirano means blessings in our uh, uh, cultural language. Uh, I come from uh, Nansana. Yes. Hey. So it is now Nansana in <laughs> Naria. Come on. <laughs> wow. So um, I'm here to share with you my journey, mm. part of the experiences that I've gone through in business. But before I get there, I must thank Chris Come and on. Solomon for giving me an opportunity to speak to you. Whenever I'm given an opportunity to speak, I really feel it is a great honor. I'm honored and I'm humbled. Thank you so, so much. I send out greetings to all our customers out there mm. for supporting <laughs> us endlessly. Come and on. I'm very, very sure this hey. house in our midst is full of Soms customers. I don't know if they're excited so because much. they're seeing so many snacks. Have you yeah. really? They're probably thinking they're walking away with snacks. That's why they're waiting. <laughs> or are you customers? You've enjoyed the Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's so amazing. That's so amazing. I thought you shocked because um, of the snacks. But then the snacks are also here. You might walk away with snacks. Yeah. Yeah. So please, and we brought samples. Hey, <laughs> so that's why you need to be, be in the room. So there's going yeah. to be lots of eating yeah. and tasting left why and not? right. Okay. <laughs> wow. Uh, I'm I'm sending out greetings to my family, and in particular uh, my wife Maureen. Thank you so much for taking very good care of me and supporting me in the business. I really owe you a lot. Um, I want to thank God for really enabling me to walk the journey we've walked. It's not been easy, but we see ourselves in business rising higher and higher day by day. Mm. We cannot take that for granted, but we really give back the glory and honor to the living yeah. God. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. So today, like everybody, you see everybody here is in the house is excited. Looks like all these yes, are your customers. Everybody's excited, huh? true. Yeah. <laughs> they're your customers. And the beautiful thing is that they're going to enjoy snacks. But before we get to the part of enjoying the snacks, everybody can recognize you. Everybody has eaten one of these items. And we, many of the people had never met the person behind these incredible snacks that are viral, that are loved by our children. Yeah? That's great. But we want to hear the story 
today is mostly about you sharing your story. Okay. We're not going to ask many questions. Well, we are going to give an opportunity to our audience online and here in the house to ask questions. But we want to hear your story, where you started from. Because sometimes when we see such products, if we don't read at the back to know that this is a Ugandan product, we sometimes think it's imported. We want to know the journey of where this started from. I've had the opportunity of listening to it, and I want everybody here to hear it. Because many of us are, lacking, are saying there are no opportunities, but it's not a lack of opportunity. It's knowledge. So we are going to hear the story to be inspired. We are waiting for the knowledge, the information, everything. Just go ahead and share your story and feel free. Take us on the journey. And then along the way, we will receive your questions online. You can go ahead and type the questions. Somebody is there to receive them. And at a good time, we'll be able to respond to them. Go ahead. Thank you so much. Dennis Ngabiran, once again, is my name. I'm a teacher by profession, a primary school teacher yeah. with a 12-year teaching experience. I am a counseling psychologist. I did a bachelor's of guidance and counseling, and I also mastered in counseling psychology. At the same time, mm -hmm. I am an entrepreneur by practice. Come on. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Um, I'm the man behind Sums. Actually, the brand name is Sums. Hey, Pastor Chris, you told me it's wow. Sums. The brand name is Sums. Okay? But the company name is Sums Food ah. Industries Limited. So, Chris is right. Mm. In his own right. <laughs> okay. Now, why Sums? We reached a time when most of our customers would call in mm. but there was this funny behavior in a day you receive like a two three calls mukama afe yebazibwe sebo tubade tusaba mutu kolele yo order yachi we need the crisps and now we are like people have started thinking that this is a church business, this is a church-related investment, yet we are producing crisps for all consumers, regardless of our religious affiliations. So what I can know, this may cause a conflict of interest. Much as we are Christians, are the proprietors, but we must really make sure that every customer out there is comfortable mm. buying the product. So we chose to separate the brand name from the company name. The way you see Coca-Cola, the way you see Reham, the company names are different, but those are brand names. But at the same time, we advised that having a brand name different from the company name is a very good. Why? A brand may get issues. But the company may stay and introduce a new brand. New mm -hmm. The brand, the company may change the name. Or the directors of the company, the company may be sold, but the brand may be also protected. So we chose to separate the two. In the first three months of doing that, changing, we lost up to 40% sales. Customers were confused. Customers were like, no. This is a Chinese counterfeit on the market. Chinese have suffered, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so they attributed it to counterfeit. They rejected the product. That is the stress. I, the most stressful moment I have gone through in growing this brand was the introduction of a brand name that was Contrary to what the customers had gotten used to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is then singer? I will know I am a teacher by profession, like I said. My father is a teacher by profession. My mother is a peasant farmer. My father has taught, taught in quite a number of schools within Mokono district until he retired as a head teacher. 
that is uh, five years ago. Mm. But as a son of a teacher and a peasant mother, mm. my mother always tried her level best to tap into the opportunities within the school environment. Yeah. My mom used to make samosas. My mom used to make chapatis. My mom used to sell boiled maize within the school. The school. Mm -hmm. So every Friday from my, my P primary five, every Friday up to Sunday evening after classes, I would be given a basket full of boiled maize to go vending around the trading center. But little did I know mm -hmm. that that was a training to prepare me for what I am doing today. Come on. And I just actually recalled last year. Mm. I was like, oh. I could not even remember mm. that during that time, P5 to P7, I would vend maize. So whenever you see oh. boys and girls around the town vending maize, mm. at times I do sympathetic purchases to them because it reminds me yes. where I came from. Oh, yes. But that was not enough. The training in our family mm. was this kind of training that would prepare us to be independent. You would be encouraged at home to at least rare a chicken or two. Mm. Have a goat. Have a pig. Have a, 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 a five, five uh, uh, plants of uh, of cassava or bananas. By senior one, would not be given pocket money. Go to school, use your own pocket money. So the culture was, we were prepared to have some of our own kamane. kamane. Mm. And by P7, I had the some kamane. Imagine way back in 1995. And I had the kamane worth 200,000 shillings. Saved wow. someone. Yes. So my mom would like, don't give anyone school fees because everyone in the house has some kamane. And they must make sure that that kamane multiplies wow. and learn to be independent. By senior three, they were not buying for us school uniforms. Hey. Yes. So you can see, they would fine tune us at every level. Mm, mm, mm. When I finished senior four in 1999, I had a very good first grade. And my father was saying, I want you to join a teacher's college. I resisted. <laughs> I was like, there is this narrative that whoever is going to a teacher's college a is an academic failure. Why are you pushing me to go to the teacher's college Yet I have the best first grade in the family than ever before. Why? Am I an academic failure? Said no. For us, that is, I'm quoting him verbatim. verbatim. For us, those days in the early 60s when we were being trained by the white men in the teacher's college, they would pick on academic giants to go to the teacher's college. So that they send out cream teachers to the teacher's yes. college mm. to impact on the lives of those who are being prepared mm. to become teachers. teachers. So he told me, go out there and become a change agent. Go and change the narrative that the teaching profession is not a profession for academic yes. failures. Come on. I listened to myself and I was like, oh, I'm finished. What do I have to say beyond this? So I went with a lot of hesitation deep down in my heart. And believe me, when I joined the Shimoni Teachers College in 2000, I did not even perform well in my first year. But once I accepted that, yes, this is the place where I'm supposed to be, I started shining. So the way you accept Jesus, mm. that he has to be part of you, is your personal savior, you shine in whatever you are doing. You set yourself free. So I set myself free. And I concentrated on the course. Mm. By the end of the second year, I came out with a first class. First class in the teaching. First class in examination. 
And there was a job waiting for the cream teachers. I said, oh, this is all along what my father was telling me. The cream is always waited for. I appreciated myself. Believe me, I got a job at city parent school. At that time, they had just split from, they had just split from Kampala parent school. Was uh, they gave me a job, and my pay was 300,000 shillings. The transport expense per day was 500 shillings from Nansana to the city center. 202 and from 300 wow. shillings. My house rent for a double room self-contained was 40,000 shillings. And I was sleeping at a canoe's, in a canoe's, uh, 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 at a canoe's residence. That's where I was renting. It's now a Brigadier General Sega Mwenge in Nansana. So my expenses were low. Now I looked at this opportunity and I was like, thank you God. I think my father was right. Many people out there don't have employment even when they have gone to school. I started appreciating myself. I started concentrating. But deep down in my heart, I was like, I should pursue further education to prove to my siblings that I was not an academic failure. Mm. So I enrolled for mature classes. Every evening I would go for a level. I continued with the routine until I completed the senior six. Mature. Matures. Wow. You know matures? Mm. When I completed, I got 14 points. I, I took a combination of head stroke art. But the pressure at the school was too much. Imagine, at that time, I was still single, but I tried to account for all my time from teaching, then I would go for school classes. Immediately I finished the senior six, I enrolled for a bachelor's. Come on. Yes. There is this regular saying that <laughs> Yes. So I continued <laughs> right away. When I enrolled for a bachelor's, learning became so sweet. I completed the bachelor's and I enrolled again for a master's at Indeja University. Still, that, and, uh, uh, master's was a weekend program. Mm. But during my course of study at the bachelor's level, there was this entrepreneurship course unit. I did not care about the university I went to. All I wanted was to go out there and pursue a bachelor's. So I joined St. Lawrence University and we were the pioneers. Yeah. That time, the university, we didn't even have a clear sense of direction. The university was just starting. We were four in the class, but I said, I am determined to move on yeah. and I must wear the gown. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, in my second year, there was this entrepreneurship course unit that was compulsory. So, Towards the end of the semester, the lecturer said, I'm giving you a coursework. You write a business plan, and I'm going to award you 40 marks. Then the sixth day will be for the written exam. I went ahead and I wrote a business plan about goat rearing. Come on. Because those are the experiences I grew yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I very well knew how to take care of goats. Believe me, there was this funny experience. Whenever my father was being transferred from one school to another school, a peasant family, they would offer us a tata truck from the district to shift, shift to another school. And now, imagine, you have pigs, you have goats, you have chicken, you have ducks, you have some dogs, you have mattresses, kitchen, everything. Just imagine that experience. Everything you loaded on one track and you are shifting from one Wait. area to another school. You couldn't do two roads. Oh my goodness. There was no opportunity. 
there was no opportunity to do trips and imagine you were shifting from Mukono town to deep in Ibukunja where there are these night dancers and who could allow you to use the truck because you know loading itself and the offloading you start very early in the morning as early as six by the time you offload everything it is already another six in the evening so there was no opportunity I tested some good life in my childhood age because my father was teaching in a posh school Namiriango junior boys Come on. yes and uh, as uh, the second in line because I'm the second born out of nine so life was good gone are the days when the ministry would send out their tinny the milk tin the beef tin the beans yellow posho tin the chicken we tested some good life wow but imagine would not see charcoal home we could not see firewood we would use cookers and wow. the electricity was not uh, always on and off those days in the early 80s but now testing such a life for only three years and then you shift to a rural school where classes are not cemented there is this trending so song that cement. Hey. Now you imagine. I was just imagining. So whenever I hear that song, I imagine the cemented Garden. banana plantation. Now you shift from the cemented banana plantation to the rural school. So we put the cookers aside. We did not know how to use the pit latrine. We started a new life. A five-year-old starting afresh. So that gave us a new ground. We were grounded. And it gave us a new face of life. Mm -hmm. Which we faced and started from zero. So once, because I have like a paragraph of primary schools that I have attended. <laughs> Not by design, or by, not by choice, but by design, by life. design mm. or life experience. Mm. Now, back to the it's business plan. Mm. When I was, had just submitted the coursework, the write-up, the lecturer said, this is very good. Mm. She gave me 18 out of, tw of what? 40. Of 20. 20. Because towards towards the end of the semester, she changed her mind. Mm -hmm. Said, no. So, like, some of the students are not serious about this, this coursework. So what I'm going to do, I am awarding 20 on the write-up and 20 for implementation. Hey. Said, we are finished. <laughs> so she awarded me 18 out of 20. I was excited. Said, now, this is not over. But I was like, uh-huh, even if I get the 18 and I, I lose the other 22. I, I, still still, okay. I can still fight to be above, uh, uh, above 50 in the, in the exam. But I was like, no, I'm a teacher by profession. If I dodge the coursework, will I be teaching mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Will I be the right teacher? Example to encourage my students, my learners out there to do their work, said no. There are certain things a teacher should not do. do. So I, one week later, the semester ended. So the lecturer asked us to work on that business plan during the holiday so that by the, the first week of the semester, the new semester, it would be inspection yeah. time. It would come. She said that whether you... You were in Kabare, whether you were in Kalamoja, she promised to get to the ground and supervise the activity. Mm. At the same time, I was multitasking. I had already started cohabiting. There is this uh, child, that baby that had come in. You know now, you know that life. The pressure, someone is pregnant. The pressure, someone who's daughter you've not formalized so the pressure was much 
And I was like, no, let's formalize. Now, this business is coming in, school, wedding, uh, wedding, evening classes. What do I do? Let me do what I can. I chose to mobilize within the school. I mobilized the fellow teachers. I mobilized the parents, my friends and relatives. They contributed for me. And we wedded. Actually, we first went for the introduction and give away after where did the wedding set in. After the wedding that evening, there was a balance in cash of 620,000. We had paid all the service providers. Having got an opportunity to teach in a posh city school, the parents would give us a like, They pledged a lot of money. They pledged a lot of money. Actually, my contribution towards the wedding was a loan of two million shillings. Yes. Mm. I got a loan to supplement yeah. eh? of two million shillings. But I knew, because I was good at saving, I, I knew I would pay that, back that money very fast. So, after the wedding, I yeah, asked my balance. bride, what do we do with this, balance. with this balance? She was like, ah, we need to think about it. Then I asked her, why don't we eat it? <laughs> <laughs> Say that you want to eat it? So I was like, alternatively, let's go for a honeymoon. I said, oh, that's a good idea. So the following day, I went to the bus park, booked tickets to Mombasa. And in the evening, around the four, because we slept around the town, uh, and in the evening, we went for the, uh, boarded to Mombasa. So we reached again the other day. You know, it is a long journey. So we slept in Nairobi. The following day again, we continued. Now, the, after, uh, <clears throat> reaching Mombasa, we chose to take a tour around the prominent places. Went to Fort Jesus, went to Pirates Beach for the honeymoon. Way. So we enjoyed. Now, as we were touring around in our Tukutuku, you know this is Tukutuku downtown in Chisenye? There are very many. So they are the motorcycles of the Mombasa. other way. Mm. In, 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 in Kenya and Mombasa. In particular. Mm. There are so many. So many. We don't have motorcycles in Uganda, but the other people have tukutuku. Wow. So we boarded a tukutuku and went around. So around Fort Jesus, we found a gentleman with a makeshift charcoal stove preparing raw banana crisps. Raw matoke. Wow. With a very simple makeshift setup. The way you see these chapati vendors on the roadside. Exactly like that. With the vegetable slicer, roma toke, like one uh, liter of cooking oil, cavera, and salt. Then you also had some piri piri chili. So those who wanted it, the ones with the chili would add some chili salted, it would sell. So we chose to buy and test. We tested at 30 Kenyan shillings. We got a pack. Boarded our tukutuku back. To where we were residing at Pirates Beach. The test was weird. <laughs> Maureen said, ah, ah, it's not really okay. <laughs> we gave it to the rider. Said, oh. Enjoy. But why don't we dreaming and enjoying the honeymoon in the night? I asked Maureen, but Maureen, did this course work and the lecturer is very serious? And I'm worried that you may not implement because you have eaten all the money. <laughs> Why don't I change the business plan? And then adopt this new concept because it looks unique. It looks doable. Doable, affordable. Yeah. Said, yes, you are right. But we should try out using a different raw material. Said, okay. What is that? So she told me, I think plantain in gonja would be a little bit sweet that would bring out the taste. Said, oh, wow, you are right. So we, when we returned, I first rushed to 
see the lecturer. I called her. I remember it was a holiday. I called the lecturer. She accepted. She gave me an appointment. When I met her, I told her, Madam, I want to change this business plan. Because honestly, I don't have the money to buy the goats. The business, the requirement in terms of cash was 9 million shillings. Wow. I had over-exaggerated. But because she proved to be very serious about the supervision, I came to my senses and I said, no, I should do something that is within my means. means. Mm. I asked her that allow me change this business plan to this. She said, no problem. Do it so as long as you can submit within one week. I will mark it and change. So I did the copy and the paste. Where there was a goat, copy, paste. Gonja. Gonja. Where there was water, copy, cooking oil. Where there was these poles for fencing, copy, firewood and charcoal. My God, she became so interesting. And within one hour, I was done with the copy and the paste. The following day, I submitted on record time. She was like, Ngavira, no? You are another thing. So when I submitted the coursework, she said, okay, wow. Implementation. But go and implement. It was still a holiday, a few days towards the opening of the semester. I rushed to Owino after school. Bought Gonja worth 5,000 shillings in the evening. Boarded to Nansana. Made a first trial in the, in the night. And the, what were we using? We are using the wedding gifts. You know when you are, when you wear, they give you salt pans, uh, for you uh, uh, baskets, <laughs> spoons, forks, so many things. So that is what we use the wedding tools to start out. So we made the samples. The samples came out very fast. When the samples came out very fast, they were so tasty. The neighbors started grabbing them. Who were like? By the end of the activity, there was nothing to prove that we had done the samples. The following day, I said that you should now buy more. I went and bought Gonja for 7,000. The same routine in the night. We made and got 12 packets. I picked two packets. I put them aside to take to deliver to the lecturer to first test. The 10, I went with them at school. Even ourselves, we did not test. We don't know how that batch was testing because... I was really, I couldn't wait to sell. I was really looking for money. I wanted to sell. And I took the 10 to the school canteen at 400 shillings each packet. And the first sale was 4,000 shillings. I got excited about the first sale of 4,000 shillings. I took the, the samples in the evening to the lecturer. I met her. She tested and she was like, this is so amazing. The following week, the semester started and she came to inspect the project, I started off going from school, after teaching, go to Owino, mm -hmm. buy Gonja, leave it at the university gate with the Ascari, go in for the lectures, after the lectures at 10, Pick board to Nansana, reach at home, take a shower, take supper, off to the veranda, you know this muzigo, one bedroom, living room, and a store, a store, and a, a shed. Then a charcoal stove. Time came when the charcoal stove was not enough in size. We borrowed the neighbor's charcoal stove. who had some business of cooking, uh, of selling boiled water. Mm. So in the night, we would use a charcoal stove, a big one, because the volumes were growing. We used the saucepans. We reached a point of suspending uh, uh, these sofas in the living room. So whoever came to our home, they were... Uh, have you changed it to, to, to are you now Muslims? <laughs> now because like eh? so this is Mikeka. Now the living room was a parking room now at that time. So I used my weekend, my Saturday, my Sunday. But on top of that, I would still go tutoring. Come coach my child at home. I would still find the time for the, my family. Go for teaching in such a busy school with the 
too much pressure. I would go for lectures in the evening. In the night, we would fly the precepts. Over the weekend, I would go and coach and get that extra money. After coaching, I would get that money on my way back home. I would go with the extra cooking oil to plow back in the other business. I made it a point that within the first two years, not even a single company from the business would get diverted. Everything that would be sold would be plowed back. And that's how I grew the capital from the 43,000 Ugandan shillings, an equivalent of 11 US dollars to a current over 10 billion business within 12 years. Come on, people. Wow. I went ahead amidst that tight schedule. I continued amid it, amidst that tight schedule. I completed the bachelor's, enrolled for the master's. When I was one year towards the end of the master's program, I was becoming inefficient in the class. The pressure of a master's program, I was like, I need to be honest to myself and to the pupils and to my God that I can no longer deliver efficiently to these pupils because I am torn apart. Mm. What did I do? I asked for a study leave which was granted but without pay. When I stepped into the business, within the first two months, I doubled the sales. I said, oh my God, I've been lost. This is the place to be. I said, within the next six months, I bought off the place which we were renting. How I wish you could see that house where the business is. Wow. Was I came and prepared a PowerPoint presentation for you to look at those images. But you would really look at humble beginnings and believe that it is possible you have the ability to get out there and start within your means. <laughs> the story is a very long story. But we are out of time. If you ask me to speak about this journey, what began, began as a one product and became so viral in the market, the customers would ask that, do you know someone selling gonja or potato crisps? So whenever I was asked, do you know, I was like, eh, why, why, why are they asking me? Why should I give out the opportunity to people to come out and sell in my territory? Don't you think this is an opportunity for me to add another product? I said, no, I will not say it. I will not look for that person. That person should be me. I asked myself, I must learn how to make the crisps. We brought on board the crisps. Yeah. I must learn how to make the genats. The demand for genats came. And they were excited. So they demand, you bring this, they ask for this. You bring this, they ask for that. Today, our product portfolio has grown into 20 products. Wow. We are supplying Uganda. We are supplying Uganda. The whole of Uganda. This was the mother product. This is our core product. This is now the viral product. With, it comes in flavors. Five flavors. We have the uh, this is a, uh, uh, salt and vinegar. When you look at it, it seems to be made in the UK. But hey. made in Nansa now. <laughs> we have gone into the butters. We've had the butters imported from America. We have the only product that is made by some food industries in East and Central Africa. The almond nut butter. This is a super product. You taste this, you never taste any other butter. So we have made sure that we address the need. We have changed the narrative. By the time we started, these products were flooding the market, being imported from Kenya. We have since then narrowed the gap on the imported products, most especially in the snacks industry. And we are telling you we are ready for import substitution. No more importation of crisps, no more importation of nuts. We are here to offer you the best. Wow. But one thing you must take note of is that your business must be a solutioning business. Mm. You must target the solution we had was to save Ugandans from importing snacks. We made sure that we produce snacks 
matching the quality of the imported brands at an affordable price. price. That's our value preposition. A healthy, good quality, and affordable choice. And that is the sums. I would request you to love, to follow our Facebook page, follow our YouTube, follow our Instagram, follow our so all social media pages. We really need mileage from you guys. Now, I need to be guided. <laughs> I need to be guided here. Maybe I'll come back <laughs> one other time. Yeah, 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 Otherwise, yeah, yeah. the yeah. story is long. But one thing you must wake up asking yourself on a daily. Ask yourself that. What is my personal reason for waking up every day? Mm. Ask yourself. Purpose. purpose. Mm. What's your purpose? Mm. How do you account for your time? You have 24 hours. Ask yourself. Give yourself an accountability of that time. You will realize that you have a lot of time to do something extra. We are paying social media influencers today up to even a tune of 10 million in our company per month. Yet they have offices and they are doing this at night. Don't you believe that you are a human being that the way they are? Mm. Don't you believe you have equal opportunities mm. given to you by God? I strongly believe you really need to discover yourself and understand where your full potential is and come out to do something that can add value to your community, come add on. value to your family, add value to yourself. I thank come you so much on. for this. Come on, people. Mr. Angaviano, before, before putting down the microphone, I would like you to tell these people how many people you're employing to debt. Today, we, we are employing 237 workers on a daily, on a daily. We are dealing with a number of cooperative societies that are supplying us potatoes, okay? We are dealing with cooperative unions with over 60,000 members. We are dealing with a number of suppliers. When I tell people that we don't receive enough supplies of groundnuts today, they ask, oh, what? You mean Ugandans, the nuts can be scarce? If I gave you an opportunity as a church to supply 10 metric tons of groundnuts per day, you would say, is this possible? Is this going to be consumed? We are looking for gonja. It's not seen in Uganda. We are looking for enough potatoes, high quality potatoes. They are not available. There are lots of opportunities. We are looking for even the simplest items that seem same. We are not getting a quality supplies. We are looking for, but, uh, for, for cashew nuts. We are importing some of these raw materials. All these are opportunities, ladies and gentlemen, out there. Go out there and fish. Go out there and be good fishermen and women opportunities are waiting for you but wow. you must seek for them come on people i'm out of words just help me appreciate mr ngavidano come on you can do better than that mr ngavidano is a teacher so i don't need to add anything to what he has said i'm sure if you are watching if you had questions i'm sure the answers were right in there because you're such a great teacher I could see that it's just in there. So all the lessons were also coming out. I hope you could pick them and seek them out. And for some people, business opportunities were being shared. Yeah, if you, if you have the products that he needs, why don't you go ahead and reach out to him on your social media sites, you said? Yeah? Can we know your social media handles? We have Sam's Food Industries Limited. Mm. That is a Facebook page. Uh, every letter of each uh, word begins with a capital letter. Sums with a capital letter, the rest are mm. a low caption for the industry limited. Then the uh, Twitter is at Sums underscore, underscore is that dot. Mm. Sums underscore food. Okay? Mm. Then uh, we have uh, um, the hashtag, we have the YouTube. The YouTube channel is just Sums Food Industries as it is. 
please uh, reach out, like our social media, subscribe to our social media pages, and we would be very glad. We know you have supported us by buying the product, but get out there and, and, uh, and, uh, and share the links. We have a lot of interesting videos. We have live and enjoyable social media pages. Come on, come yeah. on. So if you're looking how to connect and get in touch with Mr. Ngavirano, just reach their social media sites and their YouTube channel. There could be so many videos there for you to watch and learn from him. Thank you so much for teaching us. You just didn't share your story, but you taught. I could see that you are here teaching us as entrepreneurs to seek out opportunities, to seize them, to get the capital, put it back in for two years and see how you've grown and for inspiring us. Thank you very much. One more hand clap for Mr. Angavirano, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now listen, people, we never want to close our broadcast without giving you an opportunity to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You could have received a link from somebody, stumbled upon our page and seen that we were live and clicked, but you've never received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. One of the things Mr. Ngabino has talked about is God and his presence in his life to enable him to do the things he has done to this tune. You need to know by that that his business is not just in Uganda, he's supplying across borders as well. Only God can make that possible and we want to give you an opportunity to come into a relationship with this God that he talked about the same God we worship here at business garage it's very simple you simply believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the words that I'm about to share with you so why don't you go ahead and say these words say dear Jesus I come to you today to receive you as my personal Lord and Savior forgive my sins make me new today Take my life and do something significant with it in Jesus' name. If you just say that prayer, you are now born again. People, come on, help me celebrate those who have said that prayer. I know you are there. You have said it. You may not have somebody around you. You may not have a community around you, but we want to attach you to a community. We want to help you make sense of the decision you've just made. We want to help you walk this journey. So go ahead. There's a number running on the screen. Just go ahead and WhatsApp that number or call that number. There's a pastor behind that line who is very eager to answer your questions and connect you to a loving community that will help you grow in this future journey. The number is 775 642 449 When you call that number, somebody will be behind that line to answer all your questions and help you walk this journey. Once again, thank you so much for joining us for Business Garage. I pray that Pastor Chris will bring us Mr. Ngavidano, aka Musomesa, back to this set because I know there's so much more that he has that we need to tap from. Today we're just listening to the Genesis, the story. Who knows? We could go to, into implementation and many other things that have made Sons a very successful business. Thank you so much for joining us. We will be here again next Sunday at the same time on this same page, wherever you are. If you're listening, you're watching, we will be there on that same channel. The service is about to start in a few minutes. Don't hesitate to stay here if it's YouTube. The service will be starting so you can join us. Yes, and we have a business lounge set up for us here at Worship Harvest Nalia. At a location where you are, there's a business lounge set up for you to connect with other like-minded business leaders. Network with them, connect with them, share their contacts, seek out opportunities. There's so many opportunities and they're among us in the business lounge, so don't go without connecting. For those who are in Worship Harvest Nalia, oh, that's nice. Yeah, we are going to feast. just go to the back behind the stage. Let's meet Mr. Ngavidano there, even as we enjoy the snacks. See you next Sunday.